So this morning, I want to uh, talk to us on, on, on strategy for city transformation, which we've been dealing with over the last several Sundays. And, uh, um, and this is the final message in this series. Uh, we're going to talk about transforming communities. Uh, I just want to quickly review what we are talking about when we talk about city transformation. And then this, this morning, we want to talk about specifically on transforming communities. I want to share with us a strategy that we could adopt, begin to work on as we look at transforming the cities and look at it by transforming communities. Just to quickly review, when you talk about city transformation, we're talking about the salvation, the spiritual transformation of our city. To see our city transformed spiritually. To see the spiritual atmosphere of our city changed. To see souls saved and people discipled into the kingdom of God. That's what we are talking about when we, when we talk about city transformation. A very important statement that we made and why, and why are we talking about city transformation these days? Uh, it's because there is a huge shift in the distribution of world population to nowadays Majority of 50% and growing of the world's population live in cities. And right here in our own nation, that trend is, 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 is so real. People are moving from rural locations, from villages and smaller towns into cities. And so our focus uh, must be on cities where, I'm not saying it must exclusively be on cities, we must continue looking at the villages and towns where people are, are, are living, but we must have a strategy on reaching our cities for the kingdom of God and with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the key to city transformation, we said, is you. People, you and I, are key to city transformation. You know, I thank God for great evangelists. Thank God for big churches. Thank God for great preachers. But a great preacher will never transform a city. A great church by itself will not impact a city. Great evangelists have come and gone. Several of them through the decades. But our city still remains unreached. Why? It's because every believer needs to be mobilized. Every believer in the body of Christ needs to be equipped and challenged to go and impact the city for Jesus Christ. Amen? So the key to city transformation is you. You and me. We must engage in city transformation if you're going to see souls saved in our city. We went through some tools that we... Uh, that we've been uh, going over, over and again. Uh, our personal lifestyle is important if we're going to touch lives for Jesus Christ. Uh, we must communicate the gospel. Uh, uh, we must speak the gospel. Tell people about the message of the cross. Uh, we must demonstrate both the love and power of the Lord. We must engage in prayer and intercession and fast with fasting. And we'll talk more about that as we enter the new year. And uh, uh, we must also engage in Ground-level spiritual warfare. Walk in the authority God has given us. So these are tools. We've already discussed this in earlier messages. Uh, in the last message, we looked at one strategy of city transformation, which we called as social transformation. Meaning, you look at the city uh, uh, in terms of the society, in terms of the, um, the, mark, the, the seven mountains or the spheres of influence, the... Uh, look, at, look at the city in terms of the circles of influence that you have. One of the main circles of influence that we all have is our social sphere. So if you're a student, you spend five days in college, that's your social circle of influence. You're meeting these people over and over again. If you're a, so an employee or you go to the workplace, you're meeting those same people over and over again, five to six days a week. That's your social circle of influence, the marketplace. And, and so we said, you know, we need a strategy for that. And we talked about it. If all of us engage in transforming our social circle of influence, we will be eventually working towards city transformation. This morning, I want to present to us a different, another approach that all of us can engage in, which is community transformation. That means looking at the city from a geographical perspective. Looking at the city from localities or nuggets or towns where you live in and you take ownership, you take responsibility for the, a certain geographical piece of the city and you say, you know, I live in Koromangla, I live in Indranagar, I live in Jakur, I live in this part of the city, I'm going to become responsible for that community. So we can work towards city transformation, community by community. Are you all with me so far? 
The last time we talked about circles of influence, which are social circles of influence. Today we are talking about circles of influence, which are community-based, where you live, where you have your home, where you go shopping and eating most of the time. That's your community. And you take responsibility for that. You know, we must understand that God wants us to uh, be responsible for our cities and for civil government and those kinds of things, which normally we tend to shy away from. God wants us to be responsible for that. God wants us to engage with our cities, with our geographical places where we live. Look at some scriptures with me. Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 7. And these are familiar verses. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. The Lord is speaking to his people Israel. At this time, they are slaves. They're living, they've been taken captive to Babylon. Babylon is not their place. And they've been against their will. They are living in this city of Babylon. And here's what God speaks to them and tells them. He says, thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. So that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city. Where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace you will have peace. Now imagine. These people are captives. It's not like going from Timbuktu to New York. It's not like that. You know, it's a wow, I'm in New York, a great place. It's not like that. These are people have been taken as slaves into Babylon. It's not their hometown. It's, uh, it's against their will and all of that. And, you know, it's so easy to get depressed. It's so easy to, you know, fall into a pity. It's, oh, me, God, why am I here? Look at all these people. And their customs, their ways are all wrong, God. Uh, they drive on the right side of the road. You know, and all those kinds of things. I mean, you could just get upset over all kinds of things in that city. But what is God speaking to his people? He says, you know, I've brought you here. So what? Live your life. Build your houses. Plant your vineyards. Do what you normally do. Carry on with your life. Go, go forward. And he says one more thing. Seek the peace of the city. Bless the city. See what you can do to bless this city. It's not your city. You're against, you're there against your will. Things may not always be right. But first of all, come on, go on with your life. Seek the peace. Seek the well-being of the city. Pray to God for the city. Pray to God for the city. Because in its peace, you will have peace. Amen? This is God's heart. And you might be in Bangalore and say, God, I don't like Bangalore. I came in here 25 years ago when it was known as the garden city, the pensioner's paradise, whatever. And God, today it's like the pensioner's torment. And, <laughs> and you know, it's like miserable living in the city. I don't know what brought you to Bangalore. You're here. Step one, move on with your life. Amen? Don't be depressed. God, you brought me here. This city has the highest suicide rate. The spirit of suicide seems to be coming on me. Uh, don't, don't talk that way, please. Now, go on with your life. Build your houses, plant your vineyards. You may not do that, but, you know, buy your apartment, get a job. <laughs> do what you have to do. Go on. And seek the well-being of the city. Say, God bless this city. I know the traffic might be bad, God. I know the roads might be terrible. I know things may take four years for it to take to fill a pothole on the road. God, I know all these things. But God, I just pray you'll bless the city. Seek the peace of the city. Bless it. 
God, I bless the city. And pray to the Lord for this. Pray to the Lord for this. See, God, that's the heart God wants us to have. Pray to the Lord for the city. Engage in prayer for the salvation of the city, for the salvation of lives in the city. Amen? You know, God cares about sin-sick, wavered, demon-possessed, devil-bound devil cities. He cares for them. Think about the city of Nineveh. In Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the city of Nineveh is in, is in very bad shape spiritually. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amatal, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. God says, look, I see the city. It's a one of great city, but I see the sin. I see the evil. I see the wickedness. Now, Jonah, I want you to go to that city. God, when he sees the sin in the city, when he sees the darkness in the city, He's looking for people who can be bearers of light in that city, in the darkness. Amen? So he says, Jonah, go. Go to that city. Yes, I see the wickedness. It's very great, but I want you there. I want you to be my voice. I want you to bring my message in that city. So Jonah does his part and the city repents. Jonah gets upset. I look at the concluding words in Jonah chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a in night and perished in a night. Look at verse 11. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern from the right hand and their left and much livestock? God says, Jonah, you know, you care about a plant. Jonah was so upset. His little garden he planted, you know, got destroyed overnight. He was so upset about it. I can, you know, some of you ladies, you know. <laughs> so Jonah was so upset about the little plant. And God said, Jonah, you are so upset about the little plant. But I want you to understand my heart. I care about this city, the people in it. Even though the wickedness is so great, I understand their predicament. They are people who can't even tell the difference between the right and the left. They can't even, they don't even know what's right and wrong. So I understand them. I care about them. I want to see them redeemed. Amen. I want to invite you and me to have God's heart and God's eyes for our city. Amen. When you look at a city as dark, as perverse, as terrible as it might be, have the heart of God, have the eyes of God. God always looks for redemption. The sin in the city may be great, but he doesn't call them terrible, messed up people. No, he's looking for people who be bearers of truth in the darkness. And he has pity on the city. He wants to see the city reached, transformed. Amen? Let's have the heart of God for our city. God wants us to be interested in the city. And he also tells us to pray for the leaders. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. God says, you know, I, um, Paul is writing, he says, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, that is for people who are in authority, so that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So he says, I want you to pray for the city. I want you to also pray for the people involved in civil government. Pray for them. You pray. Pray for all. Pray also for those in government. Just pray for them. So there can be peace in the city. And that will help in seeing all men saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So pray for the city. Pray for all men and especially for those who are in leadership in the city. So God wants us to pray. Pray for all men. You see, many times when I'm driving down, I'm, I'm driving around the city. I'm driving in my car, but in my heart I'm praying. I'm crying for the city. I say, God, I see all these people. They need Jesus. God, this part of my city needs Jesus. So some of you do prayer walk. I do car, what do you call it? Prayer drive. <laughs> and all of you can do that. You're traveling your bus, your bike, your car. You're driving around the city. 
cry out for the city. Pray for all men, people around you. You say, God, I pray for these people. You may be driving by a pub. You say, God, I pray for all those people in and out. No, don't say, oh man, that place stinks. No, no. Pray for them. God, there are those young boys and girls who can't tell the difference between right and their left. They don't know. God, I pray for them. They may come to know the truth. May drive past another location where you know, there are people are doing drugs, whatever. Say, God, I pray for them. Paul said, I encourage you, first of all, that prayers, supplications, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all. Not just those who go to church. Pray for all. Pray for all. So as you're moving around the city, pray. God, my heart cries out for those people. They don't know what they're doing, God. I pray you'll send somebody to share Jesus with them. I pray they will come to know the truth. Pray for the leaders in our city so that we can live peacefully and then the gospel can be brought in and people can be saved. So when we look at Bangalore City as, 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 a, as, a, as a whole, our city, and some of this information you may already know, is a, is a hub for information technology is one of the top 10 preferred locations in the world for entrepreneurs. Can you imagine that? It's like we're there in the same league as Silicon Valley. Top 10 locations in the world for entrepreneurs. All right, that's, that's very important. Tell your neighbor, I'm in a very important city. <laughs> we're living in one of the world's most important cities. I know it doesn't look like it. But we are. In terms of earnings, things have changed drastically. We have one of the highest per capita income in our, in our state and of course in our nation. And the per capita income in our city is double the state average. Pretty good. But it also means a lot of young people have a lot more money in their pockets than what, you know, people who started their jobs 10, 20 years ago used to earn. Which also means they don't know what to do with all that money. But on the other side, all of this growth has still not changed several things. For example, the slum settlements in our city is huge. Out of 2,000 slums in the entire state of Karnataka, 50% almost is in the city of Bangalore. 862 slums, and these all, you know, the numbers could be changing a little bit, but almost 50% of the slums in our state are located in the city. Yeah, about 862 out of 2,000 slums in the city of Bangalore, slum settlements. Drug culture in the city. 30% of students in Bangalore are drug addicts. 30%. That means high school and college students in our city. I remember when I was studying in Cottons, this was some time ago, don't ask me how long, some time ago. <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't even know it was happening. And suddenly, this was on my 12th standard, suddenly I heard one of my friends died of, died of overdose. And he's part of the football team. We were, we were all, he's a great footballer. We we're all part of the football team. Suddenly I heard he died. Overdose. I, I was shocked. I didn't even know it was happening in my school. And this was back in those days. Things have gotten worse today. 30% high school college students are drug addicts or on drugs. We've got to do something. Bangalore is known as the pub capital of India. 
over 200 clubs and bars in our city. Bangalore is also the suicide capital of India. We had the highest number of suicides in 2010, about 1,778 suicides. And, and the age group in which most of these happen is 15 to 34. 15 to 34. That's the age group. We have a severe problem with suicidal tendencies and emotional problems at Manipal Hospital. And this is a recent, recent statistic. At Manipal Hospital, on any given weekday, IT professionals seeking psychiatric help make for 40% of total outpatients. And on the weekends, it number goes up to 60%. 60% of outpatients are actually IT professionals looking for psychiatric help. Bangalore also has the highest, one of the highest number of street kids and homeless kids in our nation. And we can go on. So if you look around, there's severe problems in our city. And the point is this, that all these problems, or at least some of them, or many of these problems, are taking place right in your community. Right where you're living. You may be in Koromangla, maybe in Janagar, you may be in I don't know, some city, some part, some community city. And right in your own community, you'll have all these pubs, you'll have, you may have slum settlements, you may have kids on the streets, you may have kids lost in drugs and so on. Right around you. And so this morning, what I want to propose to us is that if we can take responsibility for our immediate communities and work towards the transformation of that geographic piece of our city. You look at the city of Bangalore, it's huge. You can't it's too much to take on. But we can take on community by community. I want to thank uh, Brother Joshua Pillay. He's actually Dr. Joshua Pillay. He's, uh, he's, he's part of our South Church. He's done a lot of research. He's a missiologist doing a lot of statistics and all of that. He's in our South Church. And he came to us with this idea of why don't we break, look at the city of Bangalore ward by ward. So if you look at the city of Bangalore, ward by ward, there are about 198 wards. And you can go online these, at these websites and you'll find the distribution of all the wards. So where you live, if you just go back to the previous slide, please, you can go to bbmpelections.in slash wards or you could go to bbmp.gov.in and you get information on wards. And they give you the dem demographic breakup of your ward. So if you say... I, and you live in Coxtown, you live in Lingrajpuram, you'll find your ward, and you can get details about your ward. You know, how many, what's the population, what's the distribution, etc. So you can get this information online. So if you go to the next slide, there you'll see that, you know, Bangalore is about 198 wards. And if we could work towards the transformation, ward by wards. So what we are proposing, and this is something we have not done. I do not think any church in Bangalore has ever uh, uh, attempted to do this. So it is just a proposal. I'm putting it out for us. What we'd like to see is multiple teams in a particular ward. So maybe your life group is one of that city transformation team. You say, okay, you know, my life group, I'm going to also begin to in engage at, for my wards. Or if you feel that the ward is too big, and I was looking at the ward, you know, Jakur, where I live, I said, well, this is pretty big, you know, for me. <laughs> so maybe I said, okay, let me take a smaller piece of the ward. Something more manageable. The place where we live, the suburbia where we live. I'll start with that. So maybe you may take a smaller piece of the ward in which you live, or if you want to take on the whole ward, that's fine. But life groups, in a particular ward, we may have multiple teams who are seriously saying, I want to work towards the transformation of my ward or my community, my peace in the ward. And we begin to work towards that. And you do it 
as a team. So you can drill down online, get into the details of your ward. You can find out what's in your ward, where, what's all the streets and all of that. You can get all that information online. Uh, the demographic information is also available online. You can get all of that information. It's gone. Yeah. And then, so in a particular ward, you take ownership, you form a team. And they say, we're going to work towards the transformation of our wards. Or a smaller piece of your wards. Begin to engage. Take responsibility. And then you and I begin to apply the same four process steps that we've been talking about. Do you remember what it is? All starts with E. Explore. Engage. Evangelize. Equip. Explore your wards. Engage spiritually for your wards, evangelize in your wards, and equip those that you reach in your wards. So some of you may want to take this up. You know, we've not tried this before. We've, we've not gone down this path before. So we're just putting it out there as a proposal, as an idea for us to take up. And some of you may want to take this up and run with it and say, I want to do this. Do you come back and share your stories of what's happening in your ward or in your particular piece of the city that you want to work towards this? So let me just run through those four steps one more time. Explore your ward. Just go around, spy out the land. And let's move to the next slide, please. And, 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 uh, and see what, what, what the terrain is like in, in your ward or in, in, the, in the piece of, of, of the city that you want to engage in. Uh, look at it with redemptive eyes. Don't look at it with condemning eyes or don't look at it with the eyes of despair or hopelessness. But look at it saying, everything that I see gone wrong in my ward, Jesus Christ died for to redeem. Amen? So look at it with redemptive eyes. See yourself as a redemptive agent in your ward. Maybe you see slums. You say, you know, maybe I'm God's redemptive agent for those people. Maybe you see pubs and kids hanging out there. So maybe I'm God's redemptive agent for them. Maybe you see some other challenges in your, uh, in your particular uh, place where you live and you see yourself as God's redemptive agent for them. You may not be able to address all the problems, but as a team, you begin to work at least towards one of those many problems that you see in your ward. Take on responsibility. Explore your ward and then you begin to engage with your community. Uh, engage with the tools we talked about, your lifestyle. Uh, as you go on, go there and just, just you can skip a few slides, just go down, uh, please. Engage, go to the slide that says engage. Uh, engage your community. Uh, uh, you know, both with your lifestyle, by sharing the gospel, uh, by bringing in demonstrations of love and power, uh, by praying and interceding, engaging in ground level warfare, engage with your community. And number three, we said you've evangelized your community. Get the message out. You can think of many ways to evangelize your community. Let's go to number three. It says evangelize. Yeah. There are many ways that you can evangelize. You know, we, we use on-campus elevates. Maybe you find schools and colleges in your community, in your ward, and you say, hey, Let's do some on-campus elevates. You go in there. We've got all this material already, already. So you can go into those campuses and begin to do on-campus elevates uh, and just share, you know, bring the, the message of Jesus. You can do community outreach. If you see slums or you see street kids, you begin to engage. You begin to do what you can uh, to help them. Uh, you can do house visits. You know, do some of the old ways and go knock on doors and say, can I, you know, I'm here from, uh, God has sent me here to you, and, you know. Whatever, find a way to talk to people. You can do house visits. You can, um, you can do evangelistic event, events. Like we're talking, we're looking at Christmas time coming up. You can think of going into the malls. You can think of going out there. You know, during Christmas time, anybody will, will be welcoming to these uh, cattle groups. I mean, I remember, I think, I don't know, five, six years ago, for two or three years in succession, we used to do cattle for an entire week up and down MG Road. It was crazy. We'll be like two, two, ev two hours in the evening. Uh, we'll all be wearing these head, red gowns, I mean, red head, head things. I'll be singing carols all up and down MG Road, giving out tracks. And these malls will be open to us. 
And I remember going all the way, I don't know, George, who was, you know, each day different ones leading. We were all up and down, uh, utility building, all inside, all these malls go and singing carols, giving out tracks. I mean, it's like, it's almost like they just open up to you. You know, so we've done that so many times in different parts of our city. And so this Christmas time, go do it again. Get into the mall, sing. Uh, in various years, we've had outreaches to children's homes, um, to slums. We've, we've done so many of these things before. Just do it again. Just share Jesus because there is such an openness during this Christmas season. Share the gospel. We've had corporate events. I remember even uh, one, one particular Christmas, they had a corporate Christmas breakfast. Uh, I think this was uh, uh, for IBM. And, and uh, they invited all the top people. Uh, we hired, I think it was a de pretty decent hotel. I think um, one of those nice hotels down <laughs> I forget which one. Residency uh, Road, and it's pretty decent. So we had a breakfast Christmas event. Uh, they invited all the managers from IBM came in there. They sang. Uh, there's a group who sang carols. Uh, then we shared the gospel and gave them breakfast. You know, so people are very open for all these kinds of things during Christmas time. So think of these things. You can do it. I know of young people who've done it in our church. I know of a group of young men who organized a similar uh, a Christmas corporate. Uh, for, I think it was either Wipro or Infosys, that they are organized, they did it all by themselves. You know? So it's, it's, it's just great to see people rise up and do these things. Ways to bring the gospel in uh, 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 during this, this time. Uh, think about coffee shop ministry. Think about mall evangelism. There's so many things you can do to engage your community. Get in there. Do, do something. And finally, we said, once you will lead people to Jesus, do not forget to equip them. Amen? There's no point in cutting off the harvest and leaving, leaving it on the field. It'll get, be wasted. You need to equip them. You need to disciple them. You need to teach them how to follow Jesus, how to read the word of God, how to pray, how to grow in their faith. So you take responsibility of that part as well. So this morning, the second part of our strategy in reaching our city is to look at our city community by community. Our life groups can be very powerful city transformation teams. If you're not part of a life group you're for some reason, but you'd still like to form a city transformation team, do it. Get a few people from church and say, guys, let's take responsibility for this part of our city. And let's begin to pray. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's explore this part of our city. Let's begin to engage. Let's go out and evangelize. Do it. You can. Amen? So we've shared the idea now. God may stir you up and say, run with this idea. Take responsibility of a certain community in our city. And if we all work community by community, one day the whole city will be affected. Amen? The whole city will be affected. But we need people who will begin to work towards us. Let's rise to our feet. You know, some of you may be really scared. So I come to church and they tell me to do all these things. And I was just thinking, I think this morning, I forget. I was thinking about this guy, David Francis. He's, I don't know if he's here. He's probably serving in our east location. I'll just mention him. You know, he's, he became a believer just maybe a year and a half ago. Just a year and a half ago, he became a believer in Jesus. Now, and I've seen such... Amazing growth in his life in just one and a half years. And one of the key reasons why I've seen, I think he's grown so much is because he was willing to step out and do things. He has come, I think, with me on two or three mission trips. And like, new guy, I said I'm going to Bhopal or I forget which place he's come with me. I forget where the place. Delhi, I know he was there in Delhi, but he was also, before that he was in, I think, two other places. Orissa, oh, he came with me to Orissa. He also came with me to, uh, I forget, uh, Bhopal or Ajmer. So, you know, he's brand new. I said, you know, when we go on these mission trips, I'd like to give people a chance to speak. So, I said, David, speak for five minutes. He said, yeah, you know, just whatever he knew. You must read your Bible. <laughs> he repeated the same thing so many times. Just whatever he knew, he told the crowd, you know. And then he saw us working with devils, casting of devils and all. So now, when Delhi, full force, he joined the crowd. Come on, you know, casting a devil. And, and only a year and a half. 
Only a year and a half as a believer. Why? He's willing to step out. I think maybe the fastest way you grow is not by listening to sermons. I think it's by going out there and just doing stuff. Amen? So I want to challenge you with his life. Now he is serving in East. December 9th, he's going to preach in Mangalore. See, when I see people stepping out, I say, let's encourage them. So why pastor never called me to preach? <laughs> because you haven't stepped out yet. You know? But I've seen him step out. So, say go. He's going to be preaching in Mangalore. And of course, we help him with the sermon preparation all that. But, but the point is, I think the fastest way to grow is by getting out there, doing stuff. Stretch yourself. Amen? So go. So I've been in church only for two years. It's okay. Just whatever you've heard, just go, share it. And then all the questions will come. You go back, you'll study. You'll ask other pastors, oh, what they asked me this question. I didn't know the answer, what it is. And you'll grow. You'll grow very fast. Amen? So get out there. Start doing things and you'll grow. You don't have to know everything. None of us, even I don't know everything. You don't have to know all the answers. Just do something with what you have and you'll grow very quickly. Amen? Let's take a moment to pray before we dismiss, please. Father, we just thank you for this time this morning. And I just pray here, Lord God, that you will move on the hearts of each one here. Young man, young woman, people here. Stirring us up to take responsibility for our city. Father, we just pray that you'll release, Lord, a, a tremendous sense of boldness over each of us. That we'll cast off all fear, cast off all our own limitations that we put upon our lives and, and just abandon ourselves to your grace. We will step out to see souls saved and reach for Jesus Christ in our city. We pray for our city. We bless the city of Bangalore, Lord. Come on, let's take a moment to pray. Lord, we bless the city of Bangalore. We bless this city, O oh God. We pray your salvation over the city of Bangalore, Lord. Lord, we pray for the millions in our city who do not know Jesus. God, that their eyes will be open, Lord, that they will know the truth. Send us, use us as laborers in the harvest fields, O oh God. Lord, we pray for those, on the, for those who are on the verge of suicide. Send one of us, Lord, across their path. Those bound in drugs, send one of us, O oh God, to go and bring them out. For those homeless on the streets, in the slums, Lord, send us and use us, God. Stir some of us in our hearts just to go out and help them and bring the love of Jesus and the power of Jesus into their lives. Use us, O oh God, we pray. We thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people, yet the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory will be seen upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go be a light in the darkness. God bless you.